So in today's video, I'm gonna be taking this late 2013, 27 inch iMac and we're gonna give it some pretty sizable upgrades. All right, so last week I bought this iMac for just 500 bucks and it's honestly really great as it is. But today I wanna to demonstrate just how versatile these machines really are by giving it some much needed upgrades. Well, I guess they're not really much needed, but we'll give them to them anyway. So I've got a couple of things here today. Uh, number one, we're gonna be upgrading the Core i5-4670 to this Core i5-4771, which should be a pretty significant uh, power increase considering that we're gonna get four extra threads because it's a hyper-threaded processor. Uh, now, what we're also gonna do is upgrade the storage. Now, this is a bit of an interesting pickle when it comes to this iMac because a lot of these iMacs have hard drives by default, and they're obviously very slow, so we wanna put an SSD in it. However, the 27-inch iMacs have this really specific quirk where if you put a normal off-the-shelf SSD or even a normal off-the-shelf hard drive in these things, the temperature sensor that Apple has put in these are proprietary and it won't work, so your fan is gonna be spinning at 100%. Now, obviously, that's not ideal, and you can buy a cable from OWC that fixes this issue, but it's like 40 bucks. So what I'm gonna do is a complete and total workaround and also get a little bit faster storage because iMacs, obviously, can have SSDs in them as well, and they use the same SSD uh, controller and the same SSD port as MacBook Pros from this era, and you can put normal NVMe drives in. So I have this crucial 512 gigabyte drive that we're gonna be putting in, and we're gonna actually leave the one terabyte hard drive in place as a sort of external storage, but internal. So that's gonna be pretty cool. And then finally, I'm gonna be upgrading this computer to 32 gigabytes of RAM, which is the maximum amount of RAM that it can take, and that is courtesy of Adamanta Memory, who sent this over when they heard about this project. So big shout out to them. I'll have that linked down in the description below. So let's hop into this iMac because of course, you gotta take the screen off every time you wanna work on one of these because they're really annoying like that. So I got my adhesive strips and we're gonna hop into it. All right, so as you can see, I've removed the display. It's annoying, but it's really not that big of a deal. What is potentially a big deal is in order to do the upgrades that I wanna do, we have to pull the logic board. Now, from the way it looks on the surface, it seems like you could probably just pull it straight out, but because it's, you know, it's Apple, so of course it's gotta be more complicated. And in theory, you're supposed to actually remove everything, so the fan, hard drive, both the speakers, power supply, and the logic board are supposed to come out to make this uh, as easy as possible, I guess. All right, so here we have the removed logic board. It was a bit of a pain to get this thing out, so definitely set aside a good chunk of time if you do plan on doing this. It's not an easy task. So basically, this right here is where all of the upgrades are gonna take place. We've got our RAM under here, the CPU is down under the heat sink, and this is the little slot here where we're gonna put our SSD. Now I'm gonna wait to do that until I replace the CPU, but as a little word of warning, this SSD slot is present on all 27 inch iMacs since 2012. So even if you had an iMac that shipped with just a hard drive as mine did, you can see this is an unpopulated slot here, this slot is still gonna be here, so you can add an SSD if you want to. If you buy one of the base model 21 and a half inch iMacs that don't have a Fusion Drive, those will not have this slot. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. You can do this on a 21 inch iMac just fine, provided of course that it has this slot, which you will only have if you had a Fusion Drive in it originally. So that's something to keep in mind. But all of the 27s will have it, so what we're gonna do now is go ahead and remove the heatsink and replace the CPU. All 
All right, so now that we've got the CPU heatsink off and the old CPU out, it's time to put everything together. So I've got the Core i7-4771. Now, as I said in the last video, there's really nothing special about this socket. So in theory, you should be able to put whatever you want in it. But I've heard reports that people put something like a Core i7-4770K in this thing, and it just didn't like it. It didn't work. So I'm just going to stick with what we know is supported, which is the 4771, because that's what was shipped in some of these iMacs from the factory. All right, so now that the processor is in, let's put the SSD together. All we got to do is put it in this adapter. I'll have the SSD and the adapter linked down in the description below. And we just literally insert it like that. And then I'll have to go find a screw to hold that down. But for now, we'll leave that like it is. Then we'll just do the RAM while we're in here. Currently, we've just got the normal 8 gigabytes of RAM installed, so we're bumping that up all the way to 32. Very excited about that. Thank you, Adamanta Memory. That is, of course, linked down in the description below, as well as pretty much anything else you could need. I'll probably link the thermal paste. I'll link the uh, SSD, the bracket. Uh, can't link the processor because, of course, I got that used off of eBay. You can't get a new Core i7-4771, at least that I know of, so... Rosie, you're literally in the front of the camera. Get out of here. And we'll go ahead and lock that in place. And now, once I get this screw on here, we are ready to reassemble the computer. Oh, hey, look at that. Not too shabby. Go away, Steam login. No one cares about you. So, login in here. I can already see Macintosh SSD is showing up on the desktop. Beautiful. You love to see it. It was formatted beforehand, by the way. Otherwise, you could just go into Disk Utility and format that when you get in there. If we go ahead and head about this map, we've got a 3.5 gigahertz Intel Core i7, nice. 32 gigabytes of 1600 megahertz DDR3 RAM. And that means that it went exactly as planned, which is kind of rare for me. I was, I was definitely expecting a few more hoops to jump through. Um, honestly, disassembly was the trickiest part of this. It, it definitely was a little bit nerve-wracking with those exposed traces on the power supply, but whew, definitely didn't enjoy those. But here we are. We've got the Mac up and running. I'm currently running on the hard drive still. So what I'm going to do now is well, I'm going to put the adhesive on the display because right now it's just held on with a little piece of tape so I could do some testing. I would recommend that if you're taking apart one of these iMacs, test it before you tape it shut again. That's a pro tip. Then. What I'm going to do is copy this drive and all of the data onto the SSD and wipe the hard drive and seal it all up, give it a clean, and we'll hop right back into the video once all of that is done. Okay, so now that everything is done and set up on the iMac, it's that one by the way, this is now the maximum spec late 2013 27-inch iMac. To sum up, we're running a Core i7-4771 at 3.5 GHz, 32 GB of 1600 MHz DDR3 RAM, a 512 GB NVMe drive, plus a 1 TB mechanical drive, and for the graphics, we have a GTX 780M with 4 gigs of VRAM. So apart from the fact that you could put a larger SSD in it, this is the top of the line model for late 2013, and new it would have cost $3,549. However, that's not nearly what I paid, so let's run through the costs. I spent 500 bucks on the iMac itself, then I added $65 for the SSD, $120 for the Core i7, and you can pick up this RAM from Adamanta in the link in the description for $120, or used RAM can be had for about $100. Finally, I spent $9 for the SSD adapter and another $9 for the adhesive strips, bringing the total cost of the unit to $823. Now, as far as determining the overall value compared to the asking price for this iMac, there really aren't a ton of them that have these exact specifications, especially having the SSD plus a hard drive. Those are somewhat uncommon to come across, but if you want to get close to getting around where this is, 
you're gonna spend about $850 to $950, which means I really didn't save a whole lot of money by doing it myself. This is actually one of the rare occasions where I would say, don't bother upgrading yourself, you could just buy one with the specs you already want, because these things are very reasonably priced. As far as my recommendation for what specs you should get if you're searching for a late 2013, because as I mentioned in my previous video, this is my top pick for a good overall value iMac, I would highly recommend the 780M graphics. They are a huge upgrade to have. I would definitely recommend buying one with an SSD, especially if you don't want to pull the board out to replace it. That's really important. Buy one with an SSD. As far as the RAM, who cares? You can just do that yourself. Buy whatever RAM you can get in a machine with a 780M and an SSD. Now, as far as the processor, the Core i7 isn't a huge gain over the Core i5. Keep in mind, this was the top of the line Core i5 that was offered out of the three that were available. So if you have one with the base i5, it might be worth it, but let's just run through the benchmarks so you can make up a decision as to whether or not the Core i7 is a worthy upgrade. Cinebench scores improved from 1,244 points to 1,644. And in Geekbench 4, we saw a rise from 12,950 to 15,550. The disk speeds were where the real improvement was, as you would possibly expect. They went from 150 megabytes per second read-write to about 700 for both. So to close up this video, I would say this was a fun project and I definitely wouldn't recommend it. It's a weird spot to be in. Normally my projects end up being pretty good value, but in this case, I would say just buy the one that you want and that's probably gonna be your best bet. Unless of course you want to buy one that's less expensive and upgrade down the road, then I could understand it. But if not, you're gonna get just as much value buying one pre-built than doing it yourself. So with that, I would like to thank you guys so much for watching this video. As usual, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Do you think this was worth it? Let me know down in the comments below. As usual, don't forget to follow me on Twitter, at Luke Miani, and please consider joining my subreddit if you have any questions. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.